Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science. In the headlines this week, a study investigating the extinction of the last mammoths has revealed a bit of a mystery. Some incredible soft tissue structures of trilobites have been uncovered. A new species of stegosaurian dinosaur has been named and mo- <laughs> Starting off the news this week, scientists have once again had a go answering the question of why we haven't yet met any alien life. The Drake Equation was formulated by a man named Frank Drake in the 1960s with the purpose to basically work out the probability of other alien civilizations in the universe, and how many there are. This is often fed into the Fermi Paradox, which tries to answer the question of why we haven't run into any alien civilizations yet, because the Drake Equation has, on many occasions, come to the conclusion that there are a great deal of alien civilizations around. But the Drake Equation has been very controversial and has been used in very different ways. A new study published in the journal Nature has re-evaluated the Drake Equation, calling it too optimistic and taking a more thorough look at what's important for a planet to be able to host alien life, namely continents, oceans and plate tectonics. By looking at these extra features of exoplanets, the team added two extra terms to the Drake Equation, so it factors in the existence of significant continents and oceans into potential life-hosting exoplanets, and also the operational levels of those plate tectonics for those exoplanets. The revised equation shows a far less optimistic outlook for the presence of alien life in the universe, at least in comparison to many previous calculations using the old Drake equation. At any rate, the study has hopefully shown us the importance of the geology of singular planets when it comes to the perfect conditions for life to evolve, and will likely be an important point of reference to future work done on the existence of alien life around our galaxy and the wider universe. Also in the news, a certain type of ship fuel has just been banned in Arctic waters. Ships, particularly tankers, use a fuel called heavy fuel oil, HFO for short. It is produced from the leftover waste in oil refining and is relatively cheap. However, it is very polluting as it not only produces large amounts of greenhouse gases, but it also gives off sooty particles called black carbon. These black particles absorb heat whilst in the atmosphere and exacerbate warming. It also influences cloud formation and impacts regional weather and rainfall patterns. Once deposited on snow or ice, the black particles reduce the surface albedo, that is the ability to reflect sunlight, and so the surface is heated, thus melting the snow. Although the atmospheric lifetime of these particles is only 4 to 12 days, it has a warming impact up to 1,500 times stronger than carbon dioxide per unit mass. HFO has been banned from being used or transported in the Antarctic since 2011, and has now been banned from use in the Arctic. However, environmental campaigners are concerned that there are so many loopholes in the regulations that many ships are able to continue using the fuel until 2029, when every ship will then have to comply. Scientists are warning that the first ice-free days in the Arctic will be seen in the 2030s, and that action on this is needed sooner rather than later. First up in the paleontology news for this week is the absolutely wonderful discovery of some extremely well-preserved trilobite fossils that preserve the internal soft tissue features of these little critters. Trilobites are a lineage of marine arthropods that existed for almost 270 million years, long before the dinosaurs first appeared. They were amazingly diverse animals, with more than 22,000 species named so far. Trilobites are well known for the fossils that preserve their hard exoskeletons, however their softer parts are not nearly as well understood. This new research has now reported on trilobite fossils found in rocks in Morocco that date to more than 510 million years ago and which appear to have been rapidly entombed by an ancient pyroclastic flow entering into a shallow marine environment, perfectly preserving these animals as moulds within the volcanic ash. Various features of these animals that have never been seen before were revealed by the CT scans of these moulds, such as the presence of a fleshy lobe covering the slit-like mouth, and feeding appendages which reveal these trilobites had even more specialised anatomy than previously realised. It's an absolutely fascinating glimpse into the intricate details of these tiny creatures that lived over half a billion years ago, and it's very exciting to think that other pyroclastic deposits might also be preserving soft tissue details like this. Also in the recent paleo news, a study has investigated the genomes of the last mammoths to go extinct, which all lived on a small island off the coast of Siberia called Wrangel Island. 
This last population of the woolly mammoth became isolated about 10,000 years ago and survived until just 4,000 years ago. And it had been thought that the Wrangell mammoths were doomed to extinction due to the small size of their population. However, this new analysis suggests that this was not the case. The researchers examined 21 woolly mammoth genomes spanning the last 50,000 years before they went extinct and discovered that the worst bottleneck the mammoths experienced took them down to an effective population size of just 8 individuals, suggesting the island may have been colonised by just a single herd of the animals. However, remarkably, their numbers then increased to an effective population size of between 200 and 300 over the course of 20 generations. They also discovered that the population remained relatively stable after this bottleneck, and that, surprisingly, it wasn't due to accelerated genomic decline and severe inbreeding that resulted in their extinction. They actually seemed to have been purging the most harmful mutations from the population, although they were still accumulating other mutations that would have been somewhat harmful. So it seems that some sort of random sudden mystery event must have occurred around 4,000 years ago that killed off this population, which otherwise appears to have been doing surprisingly well up until that point. As one of the authors said in a statement, if that random event hadn't happened, then we would still have had mammoths today. So that's a shame, we were so close. And finally for the news this week, we welcome a new species of Stegosaurian dinosaur. These iconic plate-backed dinosaurs existed from the middle of the Jurassic period around 170 million years ago, and seem to have died out in the early Cretaceous about 100 million years ago. And despite being very recognisable dinosaurs, their early evolution is not well understood. This new species comes from mid-Jurassic age rocks in China and has been named Bionosaurus biogiensis. I think, I apologise profusely. It's known from a partial skeleton including pieces of the skull, a neck vertebra, seven vertebrae from the back, and a tail vertebra. The skull bones were found to be different from all other known stegosaurs, enabling its description as a new species, and the features of its skull and backbones show that it had a transitional anatomy between earlier non-stegosaurian dinosaurs and later true stegosaurs. So it's one of the earliest diverging stegosaurs we currently know of, and adds much important data to our understanding of these amazing dinosaurs' early evolution. A fantastic new discovery. Well, that's it for the news this week. I hope you enjoyed learning about everything that's happened in these last seven days of science. Also, be sure to go follow our TikTok and Instagram accounts if you'd like for more paleontological news updates and short-form videos about various extinct animals. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.